Так, наверное, еще надо подождать минутку тех, кто приходит. По идее, когда мы проводили опрос, надо было спросить еще людей из будущего, людей из завтра, которые придут на другой доклад. So I'm uh, doing uh, the system of uh, redundant copy in LG and of Postgres redundant copy. Uh, we can find a series of six different presentations on how we are working on that redundant copies of systems and that they are uh, developing. There is an evolution. Uh, and then become more reliable, I hope it is so. But today, uh, this presentation will be on how simple it is and what we think. Have you uh, seen my re presentations in, uh, about LG? Yes, uh, luckily, uh, some people who, ha who didn't. If you have a class of post-progress, I think you have a couple of those with you. And if you don't have the redundant system, copying system, then you can receive any of the three uh, uh, compatible uh, cloud storage. You can take a promo code from our stand for Yandex from storage, which is um, compatible, and then create a bucket. It's a simple container for the uh, keeping the information to uh, create a service uh, user and for the user to create the key of ex for the access to the extra key and then load the stable release in LG. What's the difference between pre-releases and the releases? They ask. As for the releases that I could provide it earlier, but if uh, there is no bug in the version for a month, then I uh, add the release that I come up with the release. But since it's a pre release, that means that we find some bugs, maybe not a critical position, but still we have uh, no, the previous version, which is uh, in November last year. And there are not existing bugs in this version after we uploaded at LG. Then you have a simplified uh, backup list command and send this variable uh, environment and it will connect to the storage, backup, backup storage. But uh, in the beginning, you should not have any backups. Uh, so the reason why I show this uh, slide is the console command which receives the variable environment, then uh, operates the uh, sub uh, commands. Then you create uh, push. Uh, backup in LG, and then you specify the location of your data, your cluster, and Postgres will tell you if you do not have the system of uh, redundant copy, you need to put on archive mode, you need to go to the setup uh, and uh, turn it on, make it active, add archive uh, underscore command which is also sub-command in LG. Some people use bar scripts for that and make some sort of wrapping uh, around LG. Please don't do that. The only add-on functioning which is in LG, if you do uh, something, uh, you need to write it in a uh, in LG. 
G is the only operating archive code. We use OG only for high creation of high availability cluster in Yandex management database. And it's why we use an topology with one master and few standbys and makes the redundant copies in Yandex storage. All, all of the scenarios that are being optimized to create the copy of the cluster with the usage point and time recovery. But in this case, uh, for us, it's not so important to have the performance of the redundant copying. We need to um, upload the new cluster from the backup. And the system of redundant copy is needed when we need to have, when we add new node. Why it is important? Uh, some people use the node to the cluster when the existing cluster is not uh, operating with uh, the load. So when we use the bad load from the backup, then the master will, will die. So we need to bring the new node from the archive and with the less load on the master. In the uh, similar situation when there is a need to, to upload the uh, old master after uh, from, uh, from the master cluster from data center when we lose the connection. As a result, uh, when we have the requirements for the system, uh, when we need the best uh, backup uh, with exploitation in the cloud, so we need to have a possibility of compressing the data so any uh, redundant copying system can uh, provide this for you. So we want them to realize everything because the client and the cloud buys lots of many uh, cores. Um, of the process course and then in this case if it is not used then there is no need for them so we need some and in, encrypting uh, because uh, we cannot uh, keep this data openly uh, with an open access so this uh, when we started our contribution to lg we uh, encrypted that uh, in lg and maintainers of the project said well can uh, can you please continue with the project? So it's been for a year. I've been working with LG. And then we need some product uh, resources, tro throttling resources, because we, we realize that some people have some very high load during the night, and you cannot um, make some limitations on that. So we decided to write some trot throttling resources and some verifications, which are highly needed. And we distributed uh, many nodes. Luckily, we have a huge variety in Postgres. And everywhere there's something missing, maybe some small functions or some small feature. So we uh, decided to look at the existing uh, systems and decided to develop a BALG um, it was a new project, so it was easy for us to uh, to send WellG well, well uh, into the cloud and um, core uh, copying. So WellG has to be very easy as a uh, balalaika instrument. So I found on the Ukulele, I, uh, this is one of our developers uh, who is working with Vicky Valley. So there are four strings. This is why we have in well G, uh, well G, well G, we have four commands. Well, make backup and bring the backup from the redundant uh, copy system. So we have the listing and the story that uh, we need. So one of the critical functions is the creation of Delta copies. Delta copy means that we create not the full backup of the whole cluster, but uh, we take only the changes uh, pages of uh, the file in the cluster. It might seem uh, functionally very close to become a wall, but wall is one stream and delta backup can be rolled over in parallel. When we have a backup which was made basic on Saturday, delta backups uh, daily, and on uh, Thursday we have a fail, we need to roll over four delta backups and ten uh, hours of wall. It will take approximately the same time. 
because Delta backups are done uh, in parallel. We have LSN-based deltas. It means that given the backup creation, we will have to combine every page and we can uh, match the logic sequence number with the LSN of the previous backup in order to understand that uh, it page, this page has changed. Every page potentially containing changed data should be present in the Delta backup. As I already mentioned, a lot of attention was paid to parallelism. API archive in Postgres are consecutive. Postgres archives one wall file, and uh, during restoration, it requests one wall file. When the database queried one wall file using wall fetch command, in this case, we uh, use wall prefetch command which prepares eight next walls in order to download data from the storage in parallel. And when the database asks us to archive one wall, we look at the status, checking whether there are other wall files are ready or not, and try to download walls in parallel again. It gives a significant uh, saving in uh, in uh, performance, it mm, cuts the gaps between non-archived walls, and many developers and uh, uh, specialists of backup uh, consider it as a risky system because we are based on our knowledge of the internals of the code, which are not API Postgres elements. Postgres does not guarantee the availability of archive status folder and doesn't guarantee semantics and signals about the readiness of wall files. Nevertheless, we study the source code, we see how it goes, and we try to operate it and use it. And we, of course, control the uh, development of Postgres, and if this mechanism fails, we stop using it. Now about wall deltas. In the pure form, LSL-based wall delta uh, requires to read every file in the cluster, which has changed, and uh, the time has changed from the previous backup. We've been living with it quite a long time, and then we came to a uh, conclusion that we have wall deltas, which means that every time we archive wall on the master, we're not only compressing it, encrypting it and sending it to the network, but we're also reading it, analyzing it, uh, reading all records, understand, we should understand what blocks are changed, and uh, compile a delta file, which complies which covers some range of, wall file, of walls and uh, tells us which blocks were changed in this range. Afterwards, these Delta files are being archived again. And now we came very quickly to the, to the situation where we deparallelized everything, but it's not possible. In some segments, we can have the end of the previous uh, record of the wall, which we can't match with anything because the parallel reading gives us the situation when we first analyze future without the past. As a result, we should we had to compile it from pieces, and when we come to past, we stick together wall record pieces in one record, then we deparse it and understand what happened. If in the history of the wall we and in the history of our passing, we have at least one point where we don't understand what happened. So during the next backup, we will have to read again the whole cluster, as we did, as we would do it uh, during the normal LSN-based delta. As a result, all our sufferings with code uh, resulted in uh, the outsourcing of uh, wall library for parsing. If you want to, you can use this library. It's in an open public access. All information streams looks, look quite complicated. Our master archives the wall and delta files, and the replica, which makes the backup, should take should get 
Delta files for the time which passed between uh, the backups. The history parts should be additionally got from a wall and uh, should be additionally passed because you know, the whole story is, is in big segments and only afterwards we are able to archive the full-fledged backup. On graphs it looks really simple. This is an upload from our, one of our real clusters. We have LSN based made on one day and we can see that LSN based Delta backup started from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. and the wall Delta took just around 20 minutes. So it was much faster and uh, more intensive uh, network exchange. Since we have information what blocks were changed at what time of the history of the base, we went further and decided to, to integrate the functionality of Postgres extension, which is called PG Prefolter. It means that when the base is in standby and makes the restore command, it tells to Wolji, bring next wall file. We approximately understand what data block it will be used and uh, in which block the uh, restoration process will go, and we initiate the read operation in these blocks. It is done in order to improve the SSD saturation and the SSD controller situations because uh, the wall rollover will reach the page which needs to be changed. This page is on the disk, it's not in page cache and uh, it synchronously will wait for this page to arrive. But while G is, the, is just close to it and it knows that in the nearest few megawatt walls we will need certain pages and it starts to warm them up initially, initiates many contacts with the disk, many queries to the disk to do them in parallel. It works well on SSD but absolutely not usable for hard drives because on, we are only uh, disturbing it by our prompts. That's what we've got in the code now. There are other features which we would like to add to write in additionally. On this page you can see that wall delta takes a very short time a relatively short time and uh, it means reading of changes which happened during one day in the base. We could have done wall delta not only during the night because it's not a significant source of the load anymore. We can uh, read wall delta every minute because it's cheap and for one minute we can uh, make, we can scan all changes which happened with the cluster and uh, it can be called instant wall delta. The point is that when we restore the cluster we should uh, uh, reduce the number of stories which we should uh, roll over consecutively. This uh, amount should be reduced because it takes a significant time from Postgres, but that's not all. If we know that certain block to be changed before the consistency point of the backup, we, can, we should not change it in the past. Now we have file-by-file -file optimization of wall delta rollover, which means that if in uh, one uh, day on, uh, on Tuesday some table was completely deleted or files were deleted from a table. It means that during the rollover of the Delta on Monday and restoring of this Saturday-based backup, we will not going to create these files any, anymore. We want to roll out this technology for page-by-page -page level. If some part of the file is changed on Monday and will be rewritten on uh, Wednesday, so when uh, restoring it uh, on Thursday, we won't have to to create and to read on the disk first few versions of the page. This is just an idea 
which is actively discussed now internally, but uh, we are far away from the code still. Another feature to be realized in Wall G, very unexpected thing, we want to make it a, a scalable and extendable because we need to support different databases and we would like to have an opportunity to have similar approaches to backup uh, management by using one tool. But API and MySQL have uh, significant differences. MySQL, uh, it is called not on the physical wall log, but on the pit log, which is logical by the, uh, in, in its essence. And we do not have the arch archiving system in MySQL, which would say that this bin log is finished, please archive it. We have to scan constantly. We should check constantly during the archiving, whether it's something ready or not. And during restoration of MySQL, there is no restore command which would uh, tell the system that we need these and that specific files. Before you start restore, you should know what files you need, you should know which files you will have to upload. I think we can circumvent these problems somehow. In, in my presentation, I wanted also to mention cases when Wall-G is absolutely not suitable for you. If you do not have synchronous standby, Wall-G will not guarantee you the uh, integrity of your final segment or even several segments of your story, which basically is a risk for you. And in this case, uh, in absence of synchronous replica, I wouldn't recommend to use Wall-G because it's predominantly projected for cloud-based installations, which implies high availability solutions with synchronous replications, which is responsible for the integrity of a final committed, recent committed bytes. Very often I see people who try to operate both Wall-E and Wall-G. We support the backwards compatibility because Wall G can restore Wall from Wall E and make the restoration of the backup from Wall E. But since both these systems use parallel wall push, they uh, start stealing uh, files from each other. If we can fix it in Wall G, and we for sure will do it uh, to avoid this in Wall G, it, it will stay with Wall E. Wall E looks archive status, sees uh, ready files and archives, and other systems will not know uh, that this wall file existed because Postgres will not try to archive it for the second time. What can we fix here from wall G side? We will not tell Postgres that this file was taken in parallel and when Postgres will ask us to archive it, we will know already that uh, such file with such time and maybe with such MD5 was has already been um, archived and we will tell Postgres it's of okay, don't do anything, but uh, we can hardly fix it on wall E side. So to make a archive comment which would archive uh, files both in wall E and wall G is not possible. Besides, there are cases when wall G is not suitable for you now, but we will for sure fix it. Now we don't have uh, embedded backup verification. We don't have neither verification during backup nor during restore. Of course, it can be realized in uh, the cloud before just b by restoring the cluster. And uh, we would like to give this functionality to the user. Under the verification, I mean that there will be an opportunity to restore cluster, to run it, and to run small tests in dev null and uh, amp check verification of indices. Now wall G doesn't have an opportunity to put aside one backup with the walls. We support a window, a certain window, last seven days or last seven backups, storage of three, seven, three f f latest full backups. Sometimes people come to us and uh, tell us we need backups what was uh, on during the new year and want to store it forever. Well, she doesn't know how to do it yet and we don't have uh, the control 
amounts, validation, and uh, checking the integrity of all world segments uh, during the point of recovery. I set up a project for Google's Summer of Code. If you know smart students which wanted to write something on Gosh and get uh, several uh, thousands of dollars from one company, please recommend our projects to them. I will work as a mentor and they can do it. If you don't find students, we will have to work then on our own. I will just take and do it by myself. We have uh, many other smaller issues which we start to solve. We have some strange things like if you give to an empty backup to Wolji, it will just fall. Backup empty folder. There will not be the PG control file and so he will think that I don't understand something. In this case, you should write a normal message to the user to explain how to use the tool. But this feature is not of programming, but a feature of a good uh, poetic, non-poetic, well, any, any language. We are not, don't know how to uh, make offline backup. It's very easy here. We call backups based on LSN when it has started. LSN, when the uh, database uh, is hanging, well, it's not realizable. Many systems can uh, make the backup of the hanging database, and uh, it's very convenient. Now we do not process normally the size limited bucket in S3, because normally we work with big backups in our environments. But if someone wants to program right now, add uh, this task processing the uh, error of uh, not enough uh, bucket space, and I will check the request. And the most important thing which con concerns us, we need as much as as many as possible Docker-based tests to check different scenarios. Now we are checking only base scenarios during each commit, but we want to check the whole functionality commit by commit, which we are supporting. In particular, we do not have enough support of uh, 9495. We support them because the community does. But uh, we do not check commit by commit if everything is up and running. So uh, it means uh, quite a serious risk for us. Wolji works at more than 1,000 clusters in the internal installation of our databases and we daily back up in, more than hundreds of terabytes of data. We have a lot of to-dos in our code. If you want to program, please, you're welcome. We are waiting for your questions and the requests. Now let's come, go to questions and answers. Andre, thank you very much. You invited everyone to work. Good evening. Thank you. I would like to know, I assume if you use wall deltas, you based very strongly on API. And have you made tests if you, you switch off FPIs and take a look at your beautiful graph? With full page right. Right. Yes. What you mean? Full page rights are off, are on. We didn't try to disable them. Myself, as a developer, didn't, but the system admins maybe studied this issue. But we really need this full page right. No one disables it, otherwise, it's not possible to take a backup from the standby. That's why, well, I don't know uh, who pays attention to it, but it's even marked if you disable it. Yeah, there will be not enough inf inf information to take a uh, backup from standby. I don't think this parameter is on the agenda now. I have two questions. First, about what happens to the table spaces. We are waiting for the pull request. Our bases live on SSD, Demian disks, and uh, we do not need this feature much. Right now, I'm not ready to spend serious time to make it good. I, uh, I'm absolutely supporting it. But, yeah, and there are 
people who supported it in a way it's better for them. They made the LG fork, they added some functionality, uh, and uh, I came to this person and uh, asking for a pull request. He said, maybe, maybe his database is working, he doesn't need to do anything in this regard. Uh, so, second question. In the very beginning, you said well, G assumes that it works alone, no wrappings necessary. I'm using wrappings, but why not? Why not use them? We want to, to be it absolutely simple. You don't need anything as apart from balalaika. You just use these four strings and that's all. If you have a functionality which you need to make in a script, come to us, tell about it, we will make it on Gosh and uh, well, just to do it as simple as possible. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My question is... My question is, we couldn't make Wolji work with GPG decryption. It encrypts well, but decrypts, well, it, it won't decrypt it. Is it about us, about our problem, or what is it? It's the failure of service. <laughs> the situation is quite sad, by the way. Uh, let's go to GitHub, let's uh, study it. Well, have you had it in your practice? No? Well, there is an a peculiarity uh, of error report. When Wolji doesn't understand what kind of file is that, he asks whether it's uh, encrypted. Maybe it's not the problem of encryption. I uh, want to to correct logging here. It should decrypt, and uh, we are working on that in the sense that we do not like much the organization of. Uh, system of getting public and private keys because we invoke external GPG and ask it to get these keys and then we give these keys to the internal GPG which is incompilated in our system and there we invoke uh, the encryption and we want to support by Lipsodium. Igor Savichev says, I want to do that, and he does it. Maybe the rest of us do not want to do that. Of course, encrypting has to be running, has to be an operational, and you need more symptoms, so to say, than a couple of words. So maybe we can get together in a separate room and look at the system. Please come. You're welcome to join me. I'll be here tomorrow. Maybe we'll just join me and go to the bar. At 7.30 we have a banquet. So let's go to the production afterwards and start typing. Thank you very much for your presentation. I have a couple of questions. The first one, I have a strange desire to pour the base backup and backlog into two providers, into one and the second one. Is there a strange way to do it? No, we don't, but the idea is quite interesting. For instance, I do not trust anyone and I want to have a one more just in case. The idea is interesting. Technically, I don't think it's not, it's not, it's easy to do, but can you please make the tissue on the hyper and a, when the students come for summer code, we will add it to the project so they have more work to do to get more things for them to be done. And the second question, there was a problem with uh, GitHub. I think it's close already. Sometimes there is a panic during the restore, and in order to fight this panic, there is, a, there is an issue, there is a deep block like variable environment, something like that. So it's very slow and this is a problem. We could not fix it. What is he talking about? On the safe, I think you can uh, in 
Telegram, I think it like in mentioned something. The problem is, for some reason, the storage uh, drops the connections when we come with big parallelism. So what can we do about it? We try to retrieve as much as we can. The logic of retrieve is when we try to upload the file again. And with one path, some of the files are not loaded. So we do the second retrieve for those that didn't get in. So one, during one iteration, one file is loaded, and we repeat and repeat and repeat it again. So retry this logic, we try, try edit some exponential backup and some other things. But it's not clear what we can do with the fact that connection is cut off from the side of the uh, storage system. Because when we load into one uh, flow, it's, the connection is fine. What can we make better? Like we have this network throttling and we can limit it to the number of the bytes that it sends. But uh, to work with this, to fight with the system in general, that the object storage does not allow us to do the parallel uh, upload or download. It's maybe it's uh, the system feature of uh, the uh, storage system. Maybe it's limited. Maybe there is a description in that, well, usually people who come with this question, they have their own storage with Amazon or Google Cloud or Yandex op storage. Nobody comes because not many of us use them. No to the cloud yet, but maybe something else. So the question is, it's not the question to who, but the idea is how you fight with that. Let's do it on WellG, but for now I do not have a good idea on how to fight with it. So with some of the realization, it's not provided, but in some of the storages, uh, the listing of backups is supported in a different way when you ask them to list the objects, but they also add the folder. And WellG uh, also says, okay, there is something which is not file, I cannot uh, retrieve it, so the backup is not being retrieved. So otherwise, you have the retrieve cluster, but it gives you the status of uh, the error. The object storage uh, brings some strange information, which is not quite clear. So it's not a custom, it's a uh, mail cloud. That's, that's where, where it happens. If you can build up reproduce, it's stable. A reproduction is stable. Then you should send a personal message to Andre. If it's reproduced, then we can experiment with uh, strategies of retrieve, and we will try to retrieve it somehow, or try to understand what this cloud is expecting from us. Maybe for three connections it will be stable, and we will be getting up to three. Now we drop the connections quite fast, exponentially uh, when it's, if you like, it's at 16 uh, flow after the first one. It's eight, and then four, and then one, and it pulls up one file to one path, one flow. So if there are some magic numbers, 7.5 flows, then we will keep this figure and uh, upload it in 7.5 flows, let's say. Thank you for your presentation. How does the floor works with LG? LG? Such systems like there is no delta with the pages, but maybe we'll take the backup and archive to well as much as we can. I think so you create delta backup pages, some external processor and drives it or how does it happen? Delta IP delta backup is quite easy. You allow up to a certain number, max delta steps or something it's called, and on default it is zero. So every time you do backup push, it loads the whole backup. And if you change to any positive number like three the next time you do the backup push, it looks at the prehistory of the previous backups 
and sees that you are not longer than three chain delta, then you then it does three chain delta. So when every time you start up well G, it starts the full backup. No, we start up well G, but it starts up the delta uh, if it allows by your policy. So every time you start with zero, it will be like PGS backup. It will act like that. No, it will be faster because it uses uh, parallelism and uh, compacting. But ideologically, ah, still. Base backup will put the well in well G. Uh, it thinks that your ar archive is set up, so it will be in, in progress. You can start up without backup. Yes, in this case, they'll be similar. Base backup cop makes copy to file system. We have new feature now. We can do this base, base backup as well. With files, maybe maybe nobody wants to uh, uh, be compatible to the storage. This is why people asking about this feature so that we could make it and we made it. Thank you. Any more questions? So we still have time. Thank you for presentation. Uh, the copying to the file system from the box. Do you support copying from remote storage? For instance, some shelf on the store or something like that. Uh, it's a difficult question. Do we support? Yes, we do support, but this functionality is not included in any of the releases. All the pre-releases we support, but in the release versions, this functionality in version 0 0.2, it's added. It will appear in the release uh, when we fix all the bugs that we know about. But currently, you can do it only in pre-release. There are two bugs in pre-release, and maybe it's not good to speak about the bugs from the stage, but there is a problem of wall in uh, of installation and in the last pre-release we had the delta backup bug so please use release versions and when we uh, stop having those bugs in pre-release then we'll say yes we, we support google Cl cloud file storage thank you and pre -release. Thank you, Andrei. See you tomorrow. And the last question for today. Thank you for your presentation. As far as I understood, well, G is not centralized system. Do you think you could follow this path? No, uh, we decided not to go to this that this direction, in this direction. Uh, well, well, G on, exists on the host cluster, host base, and when we passed uh, some thousands of clusters, we had many Arman installations, and every time there was something falls apart, that's a huge problem for us, because we need to fix them, we need to understand which clusters have no backup, in the directions of physical hardware for the uh, redundant copy systems. I am I'm the developer and I do not want to do that. If some society wants to do add this functionality, I'm not against that. But in our scenario of using it, we have some commands that are responsible for the storage. And this is so good that this is not us, that there are some spe specialists that uh, put this file somewhere which they exist safely and do some coding and uh, that helps to keep uh, uh, them not to be lost and for the uh, uh, good accessibility of the net. When you have a barman, then all of a sudden you see that one of the server you have lots of small bases with a huge traffic. As if you have lots of space, but at the same time nothing goes through the network. Or the, the opposite, lots of network, uh, the process scores, the lots of memory, 
but there are no discs. So this possibility uh, of jungling, uh, we were very tired of it and we decided to uh, storage the data. Storaging data is one service and uh, the special people, uh, specialists are responsible for that. Well, Andrei, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.